Chương trình FBNC Câu chuyện Bất Động Sản phần 2 xin được trở lại cùng với quý vị. Chúng ta sẽ cùng thảo luận về chủ đề bài học kinh nghiệm từ Hàn Quốc và quan điểm của nhà đầu tư nước ngoài khi đầu tư vào Việt Nam. Mr. Chung, what are the policies uh, on attracting a foreign investors uh, to Korea right now? Uh, three things I'll mention. Korea went through a dynamic a change in the real estate market after 1997 financial crisis. Uh, one way to overcome that, so to say, storm in the real estate market was to open the real estate market to the foreigners, uh, make it easier for the foreign investors to invest in Korea. Uh, one was through an act called the Foreign Investment Promotion Act, which allowed the uh, foreigners to actually own the land. Uh, that was in just in 1998. Uh, and second was called the FIZ. Uh, FIZ stands for Foreign Investment Zone. Uh, for a specific amount of uh, investment capital, threshold capital uh, in a specific areas, uh, the government gives benefit, tax benefits to the foreign investors. Uh, just for example, for tourist hotels, uh, the law requires uh, if the foreign investor invests over 20 million US dollars in that area, uh, then you can get benefit from acquisition registration tax, second, recurring annual property tax for about 15 years. Uh, and then you also get some corporate income tax benefit uh, for about 10 years. And that's the tax. And uh, third is something called the real estate investment visa uh, that the Korean government uh, introduced pretty recently uh, for specific areas in Korea, uh, for a specific type of investment area, uh, the foreigner can enjoy uh, the permanent status, uh, residential status, and some health and insurance benefits they can get, just same as the Koreans. Uh, one area, very popular area, is the Jeju Island in Korea. Uh, Jeju Island, uh, foreigners are encouraged to invest in recreational facilities such as condos, vacation houses, and for that investment, uh, over 450,000 US dollars. Um, they can enjoy all those benefits. And it has attracted quite a number of foreigners, uh, especially from US uh, and Japan and China to uh, invest in, in, in Jeju Island for those uh, benefits. So are these policies really effective? The policy has been effective, yes. Uh, I can tell you this uh, until the reason the Korea could have overcome the storm in their real estate market uh, was by the help of the foreign investors. And mm -hmm. Korea, Korean government has thought it through. And very strategically, they targeted the Korean expatriates, uh, Koreans with different uh, citizenship around the world, and attracted those investors into Korea. And about 57% of all the foreign investors are actually Korean expatriates from overseas. That's interesting. So what, what are the numbers of uh, uh, properties now owned by the foreign investor in Korea? Uh, in Korea, about 83,000. It's about 83,000 uh, properties, uh, commercial buildings, residential houses owned by the uh, foreign investors. Most likely, where are they coming from? Uh, a lot of them actually come from U.S. U.S. companies are very aggressive investors in Korea, especially Korean in Seoul. Are Korean American or, uh, or real Pure American. It's pure American. Uh, mostly. Um, Mora, it sounds like um, Korean government is uh, really uh, attracting, using a lot of policy to attract the foreign investor during the stormy time of the economy. So can you share with me what is the advantages and the disadvantages uh, for the foreign investor when they're investing in real estate market from their perspective? Well, if you're talking about the Vietnamese market, I think a lot of the investors in the past, as I said, had been uh, developers and construction companies. I think they will probably be less interested in Vietnam now because of the problems with oversupply. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, the uh, investors that are now more interested, a lot of them are these institutional investors. So that's a, a term that you can use for sovereign wealth funds, mm -hmm. pension funds, uh, and uh, other institutions uh, of that nature. And, uh, you know, they look at Vietnam as a country which has strong uh, fundamental uh, prospects moving forward for a lot of reasons. It has a record of growth uh, very strong for the past 20 years and since the Doi Moi reforms. 
uh, but there's the short-term difficulties. Now, potentially, you could take advantage of that short-term difficulty in the market here and uh, buy a stake in a uh, project that already exists rather than uh, building a new one. So, um, you know, I think the advantage is, you know, this could be a buying opportunity for, for uh, some of these funds. Uh, you know, they would just have to be very diligent when they look into uh, which segments and, uh, you know, which area of the country uh, is, you know, more likely to, you know, give them a stable long-term return over the long, uh, over the long haul. Um, the disadvantages, of course, of investing in real estate in Vietnam is that these assets are not very liquid uh, compared to some other uh, asset that you can own. Uh, you know, and I think that is the biggest risk, is that you would not be able to unload your, uh, unload your uh, asset when you wanted to, uh, should things turn dramatically for the worse. So, um, Mr. Chung, uh, from your research, can you tell me about which segments of the real estate market in Vietnam right now attract a large number of foreign investors, particularly those are from Korea? Uh, nowadays, uh, the focus has shifted from those luxury apartments and the commercial buildings to more of those residential buildings with medium-sized income uh, families. Uh, Korean investors are also the same. Uh, institutional investors, just like Mr. Mala said, uh, also focusing more on uh, those residential areas rather than those uh, high-rise commercial buildings due to the oversupply uh, that Mr. Modlo has just explained. Yep. Now how about commercial uh, segment, uh, residential segment, which segment they prefer? Right now, the trend is they prefer more of the residential uh, than the commercial um, right. because people need house to live and that's where the demand With is. It's such a big population yes. of Vietnam. Yes. So Modlo, um, what factors do foreign investors base on to make decisions when they are investing in Vietnam? Um, well, as uh, both of us indicated, uh, there's a lot of foreign investors who are very interested in, uh, in Vietnam. I recently read a survey by PricewaterhouseCoopers, it's a very uh, highly respected international consulting firm uh, that ranked uh, 21 major metropolitan areas in Asia. Uh, in Vietnam, the only one represented was uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, but all the other uh, you know, big uh, metropolises in, in Asia were on the list, uh, Beijing, Shanghai, Singapore, uh, and uh, Vietnam scored very highly. Uh, in fact, it was voted the number one by, uh, by this uh, group of investors uh, for uh, residential apartments, uh, retail, hotels. So people see opportunities in this market, but uh, they're sort of sitting on the fence right now. As you see, uh, the actual level of committed investment is low despite this optimism. Uh, I think they're looking to make sure the economic situation can be stabilized for more than just you know one quarter or two quarters or one year. Thanks for your opinion. Uh, bây giờ chúng ta sẽ tạm dừng cuộc trò chuyện này trong ít phút trước khi bước sang phần 3 của chương trình.